Koch, Rav Alex, deeply grateful. So as we point ourselves toward our Yisker service this morning, I want to share what I was thinking of earlier, and uh, that was this Haftarah was chanted each year by Ephraim Potts. And the reason Ephraim would do this Haftarah, for those who don't know, Ephraim was the founding president of Beth Am. Uh, his family were really our first family. Debbie Potts ran the office back before we professionalized. Uh, Ephraim was the first president, but Ephraim was also a shul man. She would, he would come to shul and he would roll the Torahs and he would schlep the furniture around and he would make sure the boiler was working and he would sing in the choir. In fact, he was the kapomeister of the choir. He was the one who would kind of conduct the choir while the chazan was walking around to keep everybody on track. Ephraim was many, many things, including uh, a sage mentor and advisor to me. And Ephraim began chanting this haftarah when he was a young person. His bar mitzvah was Parshat Bereshit, so it was in fall, and his mother died on the eighth day of Pesach, his mother Leah Potts. And she died here in the, syn in the synagogue. It was a traumatic event, as you could imagine, for a 13-year-old boy and for their entire family. And Ephraim's father thought that it would be a beautiful tribute to his wife and to Ephraim's mom for Ephraim to chant this haftarah in her memory the year after she died. And that's what he did. And for decades upon decades, with you know probably occasional exceptions for B'nai Mitzvah and things like that, Ephraim chanted this haftarah. So I want to thank Rav Alex for chanting it beautifully today, especially last minute. But as we move to this space of memory in our Yisker service, I want to take a moment to acknowledge not only the yard side of Leah Potts, but also and the, the family of Leah Potts that are members here, not only uh, Lee Boris and her sisters, but also David Sher, but also to, to kind of bring us to that place of remembrance. So here are the words of Kaddish in English. May God's great name be exalted and hallowed throughout the created world, as is God's wish. May God's sovereignty soon be established in your lifetime and in our days, and in the days of all the house of Israel. And we say, Amen. May God's great name be acknowledged forever and ever. May the name of the Holy One, acknowledged and celebrated, lauded and worshipped, exalted and honored, extolled and acclaimed, though God, who is blessed, brichu, is truly beyond all acknowledgement and praise or any expressions of gratitude or consolation ever spoken in the world, and we say, Amen. May heaven bestow on us and on all Israel life and abundant and, la life and, abundant and lasting peace, and we say, Amen. May the one who creates peace on high bring peace to us and to all Israel, and we say, Amen. Raise your hand if that feels strange to you, to hear a Kaddish in English. It feels incredibly strange to me. I don't think I've ever read it in English. That was a first for me. And I think the reason it seems strange for us, well, I think there are multiple reasons. I think one of the reasons is that the power of Kaddish is that it's a bit of a mantra, right? It's not really meant to be understood. It's in a language that most of us don't speak. It's in Aramaic, not Hebrew. And these words are not words that we're necessarily processing as we're saying them, because the saying of the words is less about the meaning of the words and more about the meaning of the moment. Having said that, Kaddish is one of our oldest prayers in the Siddur. It dates probably from the Second Temple period or just soon after the temple was destroyed. So we're talking 2,000 years old. The Lord's Prayer in the, in the Christian liturgy is probably based on Kaddish. If you, re if you listen to those words, it sounds a little similar. So it's a very ancient prayer. And guess what? When it was conceived of, 
Aramaic was not a foreign language not spoken by many. It was, in fact, the lingua franca. It was the, the language of the community. That was the, it, if they wanted to have a prayer that was understood by the people, they wouldn't write it in Hebrew. They would write it in Aramaic. So paradoxically, the, the Kaddish prayer, which to us is less about its meaning in English and may even make some of us a little uncomfortable when you know, we hear some of that God language, those of you who maybe don't experience God that way in the world, for the people hearing it 2,000 years ago, this would have been very comfortable because they would have understand what, understood what was happening. But Kaddish is also not originally a prayer for mourners. Did you know that? Kaddish began actually in a couple of different ways. And we don't know exactly how it began. Scholars actually debate the exact moment that it came into the liturgy and its exact role originally. It seems to have originated not in the Beit Knesset, in the synagogue, but in the Beit Midrash, in the study house. And at least in terms of its original meaning, it probably was a prayer said by students for their teachers. Not when they were dead, but then when they were alive. It was a way of honoring one's teachers. And we have a remnant of that in a version of the Kaddish called Kaddish de Rabbanan. And if you come early in the service and we happen to have a minion that day and we're not feeling anxious about getting to lunch on time, sometimes we take a few moments to study some text at the beginning and at the end of that we say Kaddish to Rabbanan, the Kaddish for one's rabbis, for one's teachers. And probably what happened is at some point, as people were saying Kaddish in honor of their teachers, when their teachers passed away, it made sense to continue to say Kaddish in memory of their teachers. So they did. So that's one axis for Kaddish. It starts out as a prayer in honor of teachers. It changes shape a little bit and form. The language shifts a little bit in different versions. It becomes a prayer that said, to remember one's teachers, and then who are our best teachers? Hopefully, our parents. So then it makes sense to say Kaddish for our parents because they are our teachers par excellence. And if we're saying Kaddish for our parents, why not also say it for our siblings, for our partners, our spouses, our husbands, wives? Why not say it also for some of us, for our children, if it's necessary. So it becomes a memorial prayer. But the second axis for Kaddish is that it was also uh, developing as a, a sort of stoplight in the service itself. So where are the Kaddishes in the service? What are some Kaddishes other than mourner's Kaddish that we have in our service? Just call them out. There's Chatzik Kaddish. So what is Chatzik Kaddish? Chatzik Kaddish is the half Kaddish. Okay, Rav Tyler knows it well. And it comes at a part in the service that is about a, a subsection of the service, right? So it completes a subsection of the service and moves us from one part to another. What's another Kaddish in the service? There's Kaddish Shalem. That's the other big one. The full Kaddish that has an additional line, Tit Kabel Sloton Voton, and that that Kaddish Shalem also concludes a portion of the service and begins a new one, but that's more of the ending, the real ending of a service. Kaddish Shalem comes after we've done an Amidah, which is really the, the heart of any service, after the Shmona Esrei. So Kaddish Shalem transitions us maybe from Psuke de Zimra into Shacharit, but Kaddish Shalem, or that's Chatzik Kaddish, but Kaddish Shalem comes and moves us after the Amidah and, or after the Musaf Amidah really to kind of end the service. And it probably originally ended the service. But what happened is it also made sense as these two forces intersected, the force of remembrance and the force of ordering our service, that the two coalesced around the idea that Kaddish Yatom, which translates as the orphan's Kaddish, we usually say mourner's Kaddish, comes at the very end of the service, both to mark the conclusion of our davening and equally important, to mark the conclusion of our davening with a moment of memory. But that's not what Kaddish always was. Rashi has a beautiful teaching on Kaddish. 
He says that Kaddish is written in language that only human beings can understand. That even the angels don't understand the language of Kaddish. And so in that sense, Kaddish is our personal language to talk to God. It's meant to be both understandable and confusing, both accessible and beyond us, both the language of the people and a language we no longer really understand. It is a paradox, Kaddish. We read it in English and we think that doesn't feel right. So Ravdani Landis, who's the former uh, Rosh Hashiva of Pardes Institute in Yerushalayim, he says that Kaddish in the service isn't really about a stoplight per se. He says it's more like a postscript to a love letter. Think about a PS at the end of a love letter. That's not an afterthought. When we write PS at the end of a love letter, having said something meaningful to somebody we care about in this world, and we put a PS, it's not, oh, and by the way, don't forget to take out the trash, honey. I hopefully not. If that's the PS of your love letters to your people, you may want to reconsider how you uh, end your letters. The postscript is something more profound, that something is deep, something deeper, something more intimate. So what is Kaddish at the end of the service? Kaddish is our PS. It's our PS maybe to God, but it's also, and maybe more importantly, our PS to our loved ones, to our parents, to our spouses, to our siblings, to our children, to our grandparents, to our dear friends, to aunts and uncles and cousins. It's our way of punctuating the service by saying, just in case you, you got lost somewhere in there or I got lost somewhere in there, I want you to know how much you meant to me. For some of us, hopefully most of us, those meant those things meant good things. For some of us, occasionally, there's some bad stuff in there too. But for all of us, these people impacted our lives in ways that left us changed permanently. And we carry their legacies with us throughout our lives. So why not conclude our love letter on a strong note? Last thing I'll say. Rav Landis says that the Kaddish really manifest in three specific ways. He says, first of all, it's about intensity. The response to Kaddish, Yehesh Mei Rabba Mivarach Le'olam O Mei Amaya, those words, is meant to be said with a lot of koach, with a lot of strength. You're not really supposed to just kind of mumble it quietly. You're not supposed to shout it, obviously. But it's meant to be like a strong affirmation. There's something about the Kaddish that demands our kavanah, demands our concentration. That makes it different from the other prayers in the service for the most part. Most of them we can get away with like not being fully focused on them. There's a couple moments where we're supposed to really focus. One is Shema and the other is Kaddish. Two, he says that Kaddish makes certain demands of us. Most parts of the service if you're davening by yourself, let's say that you're at one part of the service, or maybe you came late to shul. I know this never happens at Beth Am, but perhaps you rolled in a little bit late, and it's important to you to daven Bir Shachar and Psuket Zimra, the introductory services, but the congregation is already at the Shacharit Amidah. It's okay if you just do your thing. You daven, you pray your own prayers, and then eventually you catch up with the community. The exception to that is... Kaddish. If someone is saying Kaddish, you're supposed to respond pretty much anywhere you are in the service, no matter what. A couple exceptions, but basically that's it. So Kaddish demands a certain strength of response, a certain engagement, but it also demands a certain attentiveness. attentiveness. We need to pay attention. That's important because we need to know where the service is, so Chatzi Kaddish reminds us, hey, we're over here. Kaddish Shalem reminds us, hey, we're over there. But also it's a remembrance, right, of the people in the room who are mourning their loved ones, who have said goodbye to a family member, perhaps in the last week or month or year, perhaps a year ago on this day. 
And so if we're just off doing our thing in the corner and that person is saying and we're not responding, we're doing a disservice to our co-congregant, to our fellow Jews who need us in that moment to hold them up through their grief. Which brings me to Rav Landy's final point, which is Kaddish is about inclusiveness. At Betham, typically, the rabbis lead Kaddish from the bima. But actually, the reason we're leading Kaddish from the bima is not because it's our prayer to say, it's because we're pacing you. Right? We're trying to keep the congregation together, and we're trying to avoid any situation where somebody might feel embarrassed. Maybe they don't know the words so well, and so putting them on the spot to say it by themselves, let's say if they're the only person saying Kaddish in the room, that might be a little embarrassing for someone. So we typically will say the words of Kaddish to keep us together and to make sure that everyone is comfortable. But the obligation for Kaddish doesn't fall to the service leaders. Right? I'm not talking about Khatsi Kaddish and Kaddish Shalem now. I'm talking about Kaddish Shatom, mourners Kaddish. The obligation for that falls to the mourners. I say Kaddish myself, for myself, when it's my father's yard site. Or today when we say Yisker. But other days, I'm doing the job of the rabbi. You, the mourners, are the ones really saying Kaddish. And in that sense, Kaddish is about inclusiveness. It's about the democratization of memory because each one of us has a particular relationship with each of the people who touched our lives that are no longer with us in the world. And we remember them collectively because we need from each other the support of a community. That's why you need a minyan. Yesterday we didn't have one for a while and those of us in the room were feeling it, that tension that comes when a minion doesn't show up and we look around today and say this is amazing because how wonderful it is when a minion is here to enable all of us to do the full service. But it's also about your sitting in your grief, in your memory, and being able to be honored in the uniqueness of those relationships, even as you stand as part of the community. So as we move to Yisker, as we transition to our memorial service, I want to invite us into the space of Kaddish, that ancient, enigmatic, beautiful, confusing, Aramaic prayer. And let's allow it to hold us as it has held our people for centuries upon centuries. We rise. We turn to page 330, the Sifrei Torah are elevated as we begin our Yisker service. <laughs> 